my friends and colleagues, welcome to our live office hours. This is live office hours number six. Uh, we've had such a great response to these um, these free webinars, these Q and A's, and uh, this is a big topic. I know we are talking about repertoire for young singers in voice lessons, but I know that there's some choral uh, classroom and choral teachers here, so I'm sure there's going to be some great information for you. Um, I would uh, like to introduce my friend and colleague, my forever friend and colleague, Mim Adams. She is um, my right hand and person. Uh, I would die a horrible death without her. She keeps me on task and she uh, has to deal with my shenanigans all the time. So Mim Adams is here today as well. And if you are new to full voice music, um, I just wanted to give you a little background about our, very quickly, we are a small but dedicated publishing company from Canada. I am zooming in from Nova Scotia. It's a beautiful day today here in Nova Scotia. Um, we specialize in resources for teachers working with young singers. We are super passionate about teacher training and resources, uh, and we love uh, to, we work, we have the pleasure of co collaborating with academics and classroom teachers and experts in the field, including some of the world's best composers for children's music. Some of them happen to be in the Zoom room right now. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to shout out to you guys later. Um, we, uh, we will be uh, we will be giving away some prizes today, like we do in all of our live office hours. And yes, you have to stay till the end. This presentation is about 45 minutes. So if you would like to go shopping in the full voice library and find a new song for your studio, that's what we're going to be drawing for today. So if you have your eye on a new piece of music, you might go home with it today for free. Um, now, I want to start, uh, I want to acknowledge the elephant in the room, and that is finding great repertoire for our singers is a never-ending challenge. And I'm going to say this, it is different for the voice teacher than it is for instrumental teachers. There are so many considerations that we have to make when we are trying to find a piece of music to use with our students. Everything from age, ability, family, culture, religion, gender expression is a huge consideration. We also have to look at things like the accompaniment. Is it appropriate for this singer? Is it helping them or is it hindering them? We also have to look at where they are in their music reading. Are they even reading music at all? Are they even reading English or language at all? And of course, a student's confidence plays into songs that they may or may not have success with. And of course, we do have to think about the parental support. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is what we go through. And I know that you all know this, but our singers, this is a lifetime journey. This, I am still discovering music for my own voice and my preferences. It never ends until the day we leave this realm. Singers need an endless variety of songs to discover their voice, to develop their skills, to develop their artistry. It's a forever journey. So when, when uh, like Mim said, this presentation is based on your questions. So one of the questions that came up quite a bit is, how do you get started? What is your process? Like, how, what do you even do? And I, I love this. And this is interesting because if you are working with older, more career track singers, 90% um, of the songs at least are probably for performance purposes. They know what they, 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 you are teaching them a song and preparing them for a performance. So the repertoire selection doesn't necessarily come into play. But when you are working with beginner singers of any age, you are taking into all of those considerations. Now, 
What makes things a little bit easier is if we recognize that we use different songs for different purposes. Not every song is going to be a performance song. So you could have a teaching toolbox with simple songs that you use for warm ups or for vocal exploration. You could have your teaching toolbox could have songs that are really suitable for learning to read music. You can also have songs that are definitely performance related, whether it's for a recital, a festival, an exam and oh my goodness we sometimes forget about this one songs for fun that's right singing songs for fun because they make us feel good so I like to explain this to my families and it's in my policies that we will be exploring a lot of different music and it has different purposes. Not every song is a performance piece. Not every song is going to be a song that they know. Not every song is going to be used for this or used for that. And this takes the pressure off of everyone. Mm -hmm. Off of everyone. So when you take that pressure off of everyone and you partner with your students, things get a little more friendly. Now, a lot of you had questions about the little littles. And interesting, you had a lot of pedagogy questions. It wasn't necessarily about what songs would you recommend? It was like, how do you get them to sing the songs? Which I love those questions. And Mim and I were talking, I think we need to have a, a live office hours about starting very first songs. I think that would be a great live office hours. But let's get started with music for beginners. Now, um, Ma, we're talking approximately ages five to seven. And my good friend and colleague, Dana Lentini, refers to these students as discovery singers. And I love this term because that's really where they are at. They're new to school. They're just learning reading and writing. They are just getting into that routine of school and just learning how to learn. And I want to uh, again shout out our composers that write for full voice music um, and Donna Rodenizer and Linda Fletcher happened to be in our meeting today. So thank you so much for coming. But our our composers, uh, Donna, Ben, and Linda, are also educators. They have been in the trenches. Donna taught, should I tell them, Donna, how many years? It was like 400 years that you taught in elementary school. She says, yes, somewhat along there. Um, and I know that Linda also taught elementary school for a little while before she went into teaching music. They have worked with children and they know where they are developmentally and how information needs to be presented to them and what they can and cannot handle. Um, ben Bowen is an early childhood music educator. He works actually with preschool kids, but his music is like ageless, which, which is one of the reasons why we love him. So um, we are so fortunate and all of this care and consideration goes into every single song that we uh, put out here at Full Voice Music. Now, when we're thinking about beginner friendly repertoire, it's far more than just age appropriate lyrics, far, far more. You little ones, anybody here teach piano? <coughs> Anybody? A beginner piano teacher? I can't see anybody on there. Oh, I, oh, yep, Cindy. Okay. So I have a question. I have a question for the, what would happen if you gave your beginner piano student a two page song to learn? Like, how do you think that would go over? Like, I'm pretty sure I would see crying and frustration and it wouldn't be that long until they probably didn't want to do piano anymore. Yes, that's a lot of information for someone just learning the instrument. We need to take this consideration for our young singers. And so when we look at songs for little ones, short songs with repetition is so helpful for where they are in their cognitive abilities, their development. They are learning by rote. So call and answer. So a lot of cases, and I'm going to chat. I'm this is. I'm going to be spicy here. A lot of, a lot of times, we're all friends, right? 
a lot of times it's not the song that's inappropriate. It's that our pedagogy, the way we are teaching the song, that might be giving the student the challenges. So it could be our pedagogy and how we are presenting the material. It could be our lesson pacing. It could be how quickly we're moving through information, how fast we're playing the melody or singing the melody for them. So we need to be very, very mindful when we're working with the little ones and we are breaking things down into small pieces. We need to find songs that sit comfortably in a range for them so they can feel successful and confident. We need to have relatable stories. They need to be able to put a picture in their mind. I'm gonna talk about that later. That is nonverbal working memory. It's really important. And the piano accompaniment needs to help them, not hinder them. And sometimes lyric sheets are helpful, but sometimes we have little ones that actually aren't reading really well. And we mm -hmm. also have to remember that even though they can read the words and sound out the words, reading comprehension Reading comprehension may not be where we think it is. So even though they can speak the words, doesn't mean that they understand them. So in how we teach the songs has a lot to do with the success of our students. Now, one of the best ways that I can that I can demonstrate this and show teachers how important it is, is with um, one of our free downloads. So I want to shout out to Donna. Donna gifted this song to us many years ago. I think it was even before the pandemic happened. And it is the perfect first song for a child. It, it checks off all of those boxes. It is in a comfortable range. It is very short. It's easy to sing and learn. It has lots of repetition and it helps um, it, it, everything, um, sorry, all these chat messages are flashing up. Um, it's broken down in such a way and it's so easy to teach. Now we have actually, if you've had this, this piece of music for a while, we actually updated the download and we now have more specific lesson plans. So if you are new to teaching little ones, and yes, yes, you can use this with choirs. Absolutely. This is totally, totally a choir piece. So, um, I, uh, I'm going to, can I do that? I'm going to put this, where's the chat? Here's the chat. Uh, there we go. I have put, I have put the link to the blog with all of this, with, with all of the information and the new download to get that download. Now, um, moving on. Oh, let's listen to it because it's so cute. It's raining cats and dogs. It's raining cats and dogs. I'll go outside with the great big box and try to pick up lots and lots. I hope that I can keep them all. Those rainy cats and dogs that fall. Short and sweet, there's two little verses, and it is just a joy with lots of challenges for a young singer. Now, for those of you who are new to full voice music, our song downloads include everything you need for the success. You have the piano vocal chord a score, full score. You also have lead sheets, which are wonderful for students who are not reading music yet. It simplifies the information on the page for them. Lyric sheets and fun fact, all of our lyric sheets and our song downloads have images on them. This is not just because Nikki likes to go graphic shopping, which I do, by the way, I live for that. Mim's like, yes, she does. But there is a reason that those images are so helpful. Again, it helps them to connect with the lyrics. It helps them put pictures in their mind. It helps them to find things that they know that they can bring into the song. So those images are super important. We plus, we have lesson ideas, 
different things you can focus on and how you can engage your students and backing tracks and in some cases bonus backing tracks which are band backing tracks the nice thing and this is the one thing that sometimes teachers don't understand with our downloads you have the opportunity to purchase either a studio license or a classroom license and this gives you the permission to make copies forever and we do allow teachers to share the backing tracks with their students. I, I do not expect parents to go and buy backing tracks for their students. That's part of the package. So these packages are complete teaching packages with a lot of great resources. And having a, a, a collection of these makes it so easy to get started with new students because you don't have to ask parents to buy a book or any music. You can try a few pieces and get to know your students. Now, for this age group, we've also developed the, the songs and studies for kids. These were specifically researched, tested, and developed with kids ages six to eight. Now, I have colleagues that say that they are having success with five-year-olds, and I love that. Um, it really does depend on the student, where they're at, but um, we tested them specifically starting at like late five, uh, uh, six years old. Um, these were developed for students that are developing pitch accuracy. The songs are simple, repetitive. Most songs are about a minute long, maybe a minute in a bit, and it allows them to learn them quickly and have success with them. Now, Introductory B is also for the same age group, but it's for students that maybe have more experience. Um, well, obviously students that have completed level A, but also students that have more experience and are ready for slightly longer pieces of music. Now, other resources that we absolutely freaking love for this age group is Donna Rodenizer resources. And I did not put these in here because she was coming to the meeting. I recommend these in all of my presentations. Um, one of my favorites is her camp song collection, which Donna, I think you just put this on Amazon, did you not? Ah, now on Amazon, woo woo. Um, and her website has brilliant, brilliant blogs, videos, all sorts of resources for teachers working with young singers. We highly recommend going and checking out all of that. And one of my favorite books for my little ones in group classes um, are the 100 Little Songs and Rhymes by Susan Brumfield. Now, this is more of a Kadai background, but I love this. It's when you need little short little things for warm-ups or activities or reading exercises, this is a great go-to. So um, I wanted to share this. This is something, this is another question <laughs> that was asked a whole bunch of times. How do you encourage students to learn something new or a genre that's new or that is unfamiliar with them? And this is a really great question. So first thing I wanna remind teachers, because it's very easy to forget being the expert in the room, this is called the curse of knowledge. Um, being a learner is being vulnerable. When was the last time you did something new and you weren't the expert? And how did you feel about that, right? I, it took me like two years of awkward, embarrassing yoga classes just to feel like not an idiot. Two years. And, and I had to find the right teacher that, that made me feel good about myself. So when we are starting from scratch, something new they've never sung before, we want to start with their strengths. We, we do want to start and give them the opportunity. We want to celebrate the music that they know and love. And in places, in, in trying to create safe spaces, and just for the record, it is impossible to guarantee a safe space. We can only do our best. We need to give them choices. We need to give them choices. We need to, them to know that they get a choice and that they can choose something that makes them feel strong and, and confident. And we need to peak their interest and this is such an important engagement 101 teaching skill now i'm going to show you a video and i want you to watch the little girl in the corner i've put an arrow i want to watch i want you to watch how she's not engaged she's a little engaged 
not engaged and then she's really engaged and we're going to talk about it so okay so i've got all my singers here everybody's feeling good today yeah i got hands up awesome all right so i have a new song written by donna of course because she's awesome about wolves wolves <laughs> okay i thought you might like it so what have we sung about? We've are, we've, we're singing about a hamster. We've sung about dogs. What else have we sung about? Uh, we might have sung a horse about, or a song about a horse? I think so. Maybe our songs. What? Somersaults, right? Our summer somersault song. Okay. So, first of all, I always like to ask Does anybody know any fun facts about wolves? Isabel. Oh my gosh. Okay. Allie, give me some fun facts. They howl at the moon? Well, they do howl. Yes, wolves are famous for their haunting howls. What else? What else? Yes, Piper. Uh, I have two facts. The, the wolves only howl at the full wolf moon, and they usually only hunt at night. I did not know that. Oh, cool. Okay, so did you notice how she was in and out and then all of a sudden when I asked her if she had any information, she was right up there. She was jumping up and down. No, no, me, 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 me. One of the biggest myths about engagement, engagement is not compliance. It's not them coming to your lesson ready to learn. It's how you talk to them and make them actively participate. So any guesses how successful I was, how attentive they were when I started teaching the melody of Wolf in the Forest? They had, they had, they have pictures in their minds, right? So I love, I love that example that shows exactly what conversations do. So this also covers the question, where do you start when you start a new song with your student? So peaking interest starts with a conversation. And when students participate and share information, you are helping them with nonverbal working memory. That is an executive function skill. And that is the holding pictures in our minds. Now, that's easy for us as adults. We've developed those skills, but for children, hanging on to pictures in their mind or coming up with pictures in their mind can can actually be a challenge without the pictures in their mind they will not be interested they will not remember anything they will not go home and practice and you will be frustrated because it's taking so long so this little step goes a long way from making that new song less scary because now they've shared information and they're part of it. They're not just being told what to do. This is so important and it's such a powerful technique. Now, um, this leads into how do you navigate singing the pieces young singers want to sing, even if they're above their note reading skills? All right, that's a great question. So beginners of all ages, are learning by rote. We start learning by rote. They're not going to be reading music. So we start by call and answer, listening to the recordings or listening to the teacher sing it and sing it back. We encourage them to follow the score. And in the beginning, they might just be following the lyrics and that's okay. We incorporate score discovery, ask them to find things in the score, ask them, you know, to follow with their fingers. And as we are teaching them notes and all sorts of musical theory and their symbols and everything, we we can just slowly start to roll that into reading music. It's a long, it's a long tail journey for sure. Um, teaching in sections, you might, you might be able to take one of their, one of their songs that they love. And maybe, maybe you just really get them to focus on the music in the chorus or in the verse. So breaking things down into small manageable fragments is a wonderful part of the lesson. And then reading lyrics separately. That is so important. And for lesson pacing, this is one of the, the a lot of people, there's a couple questions about practice. Mm. That's a whole other live office hours. Practice 
uh, all we teach the song, like all of the song in the lesson. When you introduce a song to a child, a student, even an older student, they're going to need multiple exposures to the song in order to have the confidence to sing it at home. So it might not be assigned for homework other than maybe re reading lyrics, listening to the track, enjoying singing at home. So we're not really um, assigning practice as in learn, continue to learn the song. So with our beginners, this is lesson pacing, this is lesson pacing and, and uh, 101. So we teach the lesson and the song and it might take a long time. It might take it might take a month of lessons before a child has the confidence to really bring it home. The first time you introduce things, the, it's a jumble of information. They're going to remember a fragment. They're going to remember a line. They're going to make up their own line. They're going to change the melody. That is how our brains work. It takes the information and it tries to put it in places. And we need multiple exposures to it, multiple exposures before it starts to solidify into what we need it to be. Now, a lot of you were asking about harmony skills, which was our last uh, office hours. So if you missed the harmony, teaching harmony skills, this is on our YouTube channel. And this was a fun presentation, lots of great, great questions. We dive into audiation, audiation skills, exercises, how to break it down, how to help students. It's all there. So if you're looking for uh, more information about helping young singers or any singers sing in harmony, that is Live Office Hours number five, and you can check that out on our YouTube channel. But if you are looking for harmony songs, I adore our collection of music in our library that is just fabulous for helping students to learn to sing in harmony. Hummy Hummingbirds is a beautiful song by Donna that's perfect call and answer with a teeny tiny bit of two-part harmony. Um, Cat and Dog Cannons, great for really little ones or small group classes. Um, Glynn has written Four Season Harmony Studies and I've used this with adults and teenagers. So this is not for necessarily for your little ones. There's four songs, all of them covering a different type of harmony singing. This is gold. And if you've got a choral group, the Harmony Llamas by Donna is fabulous. There is a major version of this, the Happy Harmon Harmony Llamas. And then there is a minor version, which is Llama Lament. Brilliant, brilliant, fun. I love these songs. Um, let's look at music for older beginners. So Dana refers to them as learning singers. They've got some school experience. They've probably taken some music lessons or they're singing choir at the school. So students that are in that eight to 10 years old, fun fact, Puberty can start to set in as young as eight and nine. So voice change may be an issue for some, not an issue, a consideration. It's not an issue. It's just life, right? Um, I want teachers to know that we have just done a major overhaul on our website and we now have a fabulous searching function. So if you are looking for specific ages, just go to the age level or you can go into the experience level, like if early beginners, beginners. This is going to bring up songs that in your age range that you are looking for that we highly recommend. Um, harmony songs, uh, solos, also some of our free warm-up songs are included in there as well. Now for those of you, and many Many of you um, are like, all my kids want to do is sing pop and contemporary and Taylor Swift. And yes, yes, they do. Of course they do. Um, I want to, uh, I want to uh, just let people know that Ben Bowen's music falls into a contemporary folk pop jazz category. And a lot of his music is very reminiscent of the early Taylor Swift country pop age. There's a lot of guitars in the backing tracks and the melodies are very um, repetitive and 
uh, simple, but they can be made very challenging with improvisation. We encourage improvisation and changing the melody and making this artistically the student's own version of it. So with Ben's music, there is always a band track and everybody has to shout out to my husband, Sean, who plays guitar, mandolin, ukulele, bass, drums, piano, and all of those live instruments are put into the band tracks because that brings an energy into it that kids, well, all singers love. And I want to just give you a little sample of the band track. Now, I do want to say the score, I got a shout out to Mim because Mim takes Ben's guitar tracks and then then turns them into really cool poppy piano versions like Mim's that is Mim's superpower. I have a team of superhuman heroes, music heroes. Like I am so blessed with the people I get to work with. So this is the band track for When Winter. So just so you get a sense of the of the the vibe. And later on, bass and drums come in. When the sun. Very, very, very cool. Ben's music is an absolute hit with kids, and it really does um, help with that that need understandable need to sing that more contemporary music with lots of vocal challenges in all of those. Now, if you are looking for cabaret performance festival type music, again, if you look under 10 to 12 year olds on the thing, you'll find the singing Yeti. This is hilarious. It's about a Yeti that's that hides but wants to sing but will not join your choir. This is actually a crazy study of major and minor arpeggios. So if you're looking for a clever little piece that's going to show off a singer's ability, singing Yeti is pretty sweet. And yes, there is a very cool band track. Um, Sean plays mandolin through it. It's very eerie. It's awesome. Um, I Will Be There by Donna Rodenizer made me cry when I heard it. Um, it is a wonderful song. Could be a choral piece. Uh, it is just about, you know, I'm with you even though I'm not with you. It's brilliant. Lyrics are lovely. Um, if you're looking for a fun cabaret style showcase piece for your next winter recital, um, it's snowing. Oh, yes. Oh, no is brilliant. And I have to tell you, my friend, I think it was Naomi. Naomi sang, she's the teacher. She sang the it's snowing. Oh, no. And she would know because she lives in Calgary, Canada, and they just like, the winter hates Calgary, just so you know. Um, and then one of her students sang the It's Snowing, Oh Yes. And it's two perspectives on snow. And she said it was a total showstopper. The audience loved it. Everybody was a hero. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant partner song that you can do. One is in major, one is in minor, one loves snow, one is an adult that has to shovel snow. It's brilliant. And then a new one that has just been added to our uh, our um, catalog is, is Glenn Lehman's um, I Am an Earthling, which is basically if I ever met a person from another planet, I would show them how beautiful our 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 world is and i think linda you did you, you had students sing this at the festival and i think it was a hit was it not oh, she's saying yes yeah it's an absolute beautiful song also um so the the full voice team we have these music meetings these quarterly music meetings to go over songs that we want to put in there and this song was like this song was a hell yes song and we were like, oh, it's so beautiful, it makes me cry. So there was crying at the meeting. Um, so yes, uh, it really is beautiful. Um, and these are just 
These are just a handful. I mean, it was so hard to choose songs to share with everybody today, but these are beautiful. And there are um, videos, lyric videos of these on our YouTube channel, so you can check out the performances of them. Now, um, this is a really great question. I sometimes have difficulty finding literature for kids ages 9 to 12 who are perhaps a little too old for animal songs. Totally get that. But who can still benefit from songs that work on simple rhythm and interval concepts. This is what we design our our free warm-up songs for the sushi song my teenagers loved that by the way and you can make it as challenging as you need to um, gingerbread man and the hot chocolate warm-up song are all simple but they're not juvenile um, they're not like silly well maybe they're silly but um, I think our, our teenagers need to like have some fun um, hot chocolate warm-up also has a German language translation so you it, it, and it comes with the download these are all free by the way chocolate was written by a teacher and her student who used the hot chocolate warm-up so they did the translation for us and they submitted it to us and we we double checked that it was accurate <laughs> and then we published it but there's lots of challenges in simple melodies like this now the other thing that i do with my students is i will take their taylor swift song and i will take an excerpt from it and we will dissect it including making them do solfege to it including looking at the looking at the intervals looking at the vocal challenges um fun fact taylor swift songs are brilliant studies in registration and your students are going to need to figure out how to navigate all of the colors of their of their voices. So there's always something there that you can you can do. But I will take excerpts from any piece of music and I will ask them what the interval is or I will get them to sing a phrase as the warm up and then we'll break it apart and then we'll put it back together. So again, you can use the songs that they know and are working on and break them into small fragments and use that for learning opportunities. It doesn't have to be a complete song that you use for music reading or intervals or whatever. So pick, pick little pieces and have fun with it. Um, I want to just share a little excerpt from Ginevra's book. So Dr. Ginevra Williams, uh, her book, Teaching Singing to Children and Young Adults will be coming out in the fall. We're so freaking excited. And it has been a long, long journey, um, but we are so close. Um, but there is a whole chapter in this book about adolescence, what they're going through. And I love what she says here about what is our role, right? Kids wanna sing all these songs and do, should we let them choose? Should, how do we manage and balance that? And I think that's a, that's a personal question for each and every one of us. Um, are we teaching student led? Are we partnering with our students? I think we should be partnering with our students. And this is going to help them have the confidence to have agency and to start to really be able to voice what they would voice, no pun intended. Um, what they like, why they like it. It's going to help them choose better songs for themselves. So it's a long journey, it's a partnership. And I love what she says here. Uh, we need to facilitate a creative and welcoming space to, for exploration, giving young singers agency to determine their own learning paths. We are not funneling them into what we did I mean, I would love all my students to go to school for jazz, but that is not necessarily their interests. But I love that. So Ginevra's book is coming out this fall. Please look out for it. Now, um, this is a really good question. How frequently do you assign new repertoire? Do you typically work through one song? Uh, do you do multiple songs? And I, I have two things here. First of all, it really does depend on your lesson length. If you are doing a 30 minute lesson, you're not going to get a lot of songs in each and every lesson. Um, so that really depends. Um, but when it comes to repertoire, I like to think of, of how we learn and um, constantly circling back 
So I might bring back an old song that they sang at last recital, but we'll use it for a warm up. Or we'll take the melody of something that they know really, really well, and we'll just focus on that for a technical study. Um, I want my students to have a repertoire list of songs that they enjoy, and then I want to be able to give them give them opportunities to review them and sing them and come back to them or leave them for a while. So if we recognize that repertoire isn't just for performances, right, or for exams, or for that, we've got a wide variety of types of music that we use for different purposes. It's really up to you and the student and how long your lessons are how you how you bring repertoire in and out i always every once in a while i would just say we're singing old songs today today is a singing day we're going to sing all the repertoire that you have performed and with some of my students that have been with me for years we would go back we would go back to like their level two exam music and it's a different song when they're two, three years older. It's a totally different experience for them. And many of them will be like, oh, I forgot about this song. I like this song. I forgot about it. Or the thing that I love is when I go back a couple of years or a year or whatever to an older song, they'll say something like, this is so much easier now. That is a wonderful, wonderful reminder to our students of how far they've come. So in your, in your lesson pacing, in the way you structure your lessons, have a let's sing all our repertoire lesson. Those are fun. Actually, those could be wonderful lessons that you invite parents in to celebrate how far those students have come. Not every song needs to be performance quality. Maybe, you know, maybe they're still using their music. No big deal. You know, maybe they just sing a part of a song. All of this is fine. All of this is fine. Now, I wanted to share a few more things and then we're going to get to our draws. First of all, you are doing a great job. And I'm pointing into my Zoom room so that you know that I mean it. You are doing a fantastic job as an educator. And I don't know if you need to hear this, but our work as voice teachers is important work. Giving students these spaces to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, or small group classes is so powerful. It has a huge impact on their lives. Building an exciting library of educational music takes time. <laughs> it takes time. It takes dedication. It gets easier when you know your students and when you align with student-led teaching. When you partner with your students to try and help them figure out what they like, what they're good at, and you celebrate what they like and what they're good at, it gets so much easier. Here's a few um, tips for discovering new music with your busy. Yes, Bree says, thank you for that. I'm just starting to be like, it's so overwhelming. No, it's fun. Bree, I'm going to tell you how it's fun. Check this out. You set some time in your administrative time, you know, when you're doing stuff for your studio, and we all need to book our administrative time, and you dedicate it to discovering new music with no pressure. I used to listen to YouTube playlists at the end of my teaching day when I was cleaning up my studio, or if a student canceled on me, I might spend 15 minutes checking out some songs. Um, YouTube playlists, Spotify playlists, Google, music, uh, musical theater for students, sages, blah, blah, blah. There's probably a playlist on there. Throw it on, grab a coffee, don't get on your phone and scroll, listen to the music. I also recommend grabbing your friends, going out for coffee and sharing some success stories with your with your friends. I had this song, I learned this great song, my students love this, right? One of the things I used to love going is when back in the day, when my students did festivals, I would be like, I wonder what Linda Fletcher's students are singing, because they always sang great songs. And I was like, dang it, how does Linda always find those great songs? And then Linda and I became friends, and I had this amazing resource for learning new music. And, and so your colleagues are 
are awesome for that. Um, I also want to, uh, if you are not yet a member of Voice Teachers for Young Singers, this is the forum that's run by myself and Dana Lantini. We created this forum as a safe space for teachers to ask things about working with children. And if you go to the search bar, do you see that little the arrow with the search? And you type in repertoire for five-year-olds, like search what you're looking for, I guarantee there's like dozens and dozens of threads with oodles and oodles and oodles of repertoire suggestions and links and YouTube videos. So a lot of the questions that you may have have already been answered in this forum. You do have to answer some questions. Um, but when you go to, if you're not a member yet, you have to ask some questions. Basically, we want a screen to make sure that, that you think teaching children to sing is a cool thing. Cause there are those that don't, we don't let them in the group. <laughs> so, um, that is a wonderful place. And then Mim, you had some suggestions about the Hal Leonard and music notes. Yeah, so um, just in case you're not familiar with like searching for music online, um, the Hal, Hal Leonard is just such a major publisher in almost every book that's not like a full voice book or a Donna Rodenizer book is a Hal Leonard book. So should you choose to shop other than full voice places, um, their website is so useful. Like you just go and there's an obvious like vocal category. You click on it and from there you can very easily find children's books and musical theater books. Um, and there's like a ton of pop books and stuff too. Um, but they're like, it's very helpful the way they've got it organized. And they also have listening libraries on their YouTube channel. Um, so like, you know, you just search it, How Leonard Listening Library. And those are excellent resources for hearing the songs that they have in their actual publications. So it's very helpful. Um, and then the problem with books though, can, can be like, uh, some of the questions were about vocal range, right? So the ranges of songs and um, changing voice. So ranges for changing voice. And this is where um, a book isn't as helpful as being able to access individual songs. So musicnotes.com is an excellent website where you can buy individual songs. And if you pay like, I think it's $15 a month to have one of their pro memberships. When you purchase a song, you get the PDF in every available key. So how helpful is that with your students that just need the song to be in a different key? So these are both things you should kind of get used to using as a teacher and try to incorporate into your studios. It will help you with your uh, song selections. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Now, I um, Rose says, what about Sheet Music Direct? That's another great one. For sure. Yeah, they're, they're all fine, um, but I don't think they have their every available key membership. I don't know. Uh -huh. Like, there's, there's a lot of different options. Absolutely. If you like that one, you should use that one. All right. Um, now, I wanted to tell everybody, we have a fun fun little thing that we're doing in the next couple of weeks. So um, we are looking for your student success stories. If you use full voice music resources and you have had one of those amazing things where the kids light up, parents light up, you light up, it's been a joy to teach it, they'd love to sing it. We're looking for your student success stories. And in return for your student success stories, we're giving you our song sticker package as a thank you gift. There's 125 stickers. These are all our songs, our freebies. We have, yes, there's a whole page of Pretty Itty Bitty Kitty Unicorn stickers. Those, that's gold right there. Um, so I have a Google form. I'm gonna put this in the chat. I'm going to put this in the chat. Boop. Enter. If you go to the Google form, now please know that you will have to provide your mailing address to us. But after this uh, presentation or after our uh, success story uh, campaign is over, we will be deleting all of your personal information and we will only use it to send you a package of stickers. Um, so there is the Google Forms to take you to your student success story. Um, oh, uh, Catherine had another question. Do you have students purchase music individual pieces or do you recommend purchasing it yourself? I'm gonna let Min um, answer that. That's a great question. 
Um, I think when it comes to that, it depends on the student. Like if I have an adult student, I might very well be like, here, you go purchase your song, but I probably have to walk them through the process at least once or twice to get used to it. But with a child, I don't think it's really fair to ask them or their families to figure it out. So uh, I think the, like, it's best if you get it. And then it's up to you how you run your studio, if how you charge them for that music. It might be wrapped up in their lesson, like tuition that you just get the repertoire, or it might be uh, you attach it to their invoice. So, but absolutely, you should get the music for your small students for sure. All right. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, now we have a routine for this. We are going to do our wheel of names for the draw, but Mim, you need to go into the chat. Mim is going to put a link to a Google form where you, if you want to be part of the draw, you need to put your name in the Google form, and then she's going to put that into a wheel of names. So, Mim, have you, I can't see the thing there. Oh, you're muted. There, okay. I so, just put it in. Uh, yes, Arpana, of course you get to participate. Get your name in there. If you are in the Zoom room right now, you get to participate. So click on that link, put your name. I would recommend just first name and last letter. Um, uh, Donna and Linda, you guys get access to all of our music. You do not put your names in there, you silly <laughs> goose. <laughs> You just send me an email and tell me what you want. Um, now, uh, so uh, Mim's going to get all of those names in there. We're going to give you a few minutes. Now, before we do the draw, I do want to tell everybody, if you don't win a prize, that's okay because today is the last day for our 20% off song download special. You use the code SONGSALE24. So if you don't win a prize, you can still build that library of wonderful songs from our, our, our wonderful composers, and that will end tonight. So you still have time to save, save, save some money. This is a wonderful time to get some new pieces and to discover some new songs. Um, and I'm going to, I guess I should stop sharing just so that Mim can share. I think so. And I am going to allow Mim to share because she's going to show you the wheel of names. Woo oh, woo. Okay. Oh. So I have, I was just going to say, our pon go, sorry. I was just going to say, our punish said, I bought the llama bundle and she's loving it. Woo! I know the llama songs. Okay, since we're all friends, I need to tell you, and because she's in the room, I said to Donna Rodenizer, I said to her, I need one song about a llama. She sent me five songs about llamas, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're all amazing. So we put three of them into a package because you can't live with just one llama song. So thank you, Donna, for that. I think my favorite is Llama Lullaby. I think that's Me too. Monica I love it so Lama. much. Linda said Monica Llama is her favorite. <laughs> when I wrote Monica Llama, I thought of put it, putting in, when I wrote Monica Llama, I thought about putting Kamala Llama, but I didn't know if that was appropriate. So if you want to be politically on the edge, you can change it to Kamala Llama if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves their kids' vocal lessons to be politically on the edge. <laughs> Wait, somebody <laughs> says they, who owns a llama? What? <laughs> Judith, you own one? Like, for real? Like, in your, in like, oh my God. <laughs> How do you one. get anything done? I would just be out there hugging it and kissing it and petting it and brushing it and singing to it. How do you do that? Like, oh my gosh. All right. I think we're ready. Woo! Okay, did I share the right screen? You did. Okay, okay. everyone can see yes. the wheel of names? Yes. Okay, cool. Just a few windows open, so I don't, I, I'm not sure what everyone's looking at. Can okay, everybody so, see the wheel of names? Give that thumbs up, thumbs up to the wheel of names. Okay, awesome. And if your name is missing, please uh, send me a note ASAP. I'll just give everyone another few seconds to do that. All right. Um, I think we're probably oh, good to go. Wait. Judith is missing. Judith is missing. 
She Judith. had llamas. You can't miss Judith. I know. Okay, Judith, I have added you with uh, funny spelling. Let me do this better. Judith. Okay, anyone else missing? Anyone? Anybody else? Is any, any names? Last names? Okay, last call for names. Here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Dance to music. Mandatory. Oh, Sky! Woo -hoo! <laughs> All right. So, Sky, this is what you're going to do. Uh, and to any of the winners, um, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. Uh, and you are going to go to our song library and tell me what song you would like now if you have an account with full voice music what i'll do is i'll just add it to your account so that it will live and you can access it whenever if you don't have an account i can email you the song log package but i highly recommend you get an account um so here is my email Nikki at fullvoicemusic.com. So Sky, go shopping and then send me a little message. Let me know what you want. Um, Mim, are you uh, documenting the winners? Because sometimes we forget. So far, yes. One winner, one document. Let's do the next winner. Woo! Awesome. All right. Arpana is from India. That's amazing. Yay. All right. Well, now you get to go shopping for even more songs. More Let me songs. Know. And you have my email, so you yes. just send me an email. All right. We need more winners. We need more winners. All right. Here we go. All right, Craig. You get to go shopping. Let me uh, let me know what you want. Uh, all right, I think we should have two more. Woo! Okay, here we go. Nadine! All right, Nadine. Congratulations. All right, and last but not least. Awesome. Okay, so my friends, the for those of you that won, congratulations. Please enjoy your shopping spree at Full Voice Music. For those of you who are looking for new music, remember the song sale ends today. I'm I think it's the well, I'm Atlantic, so it's probably like in trying to think of time zones I, I uh, I'll leave the cart open as long as I can <laughs> get in there get your songs um and uh for our next live office hours dun, 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 um I'm going to be featuring uh Donna Ronizer Donna is coming in wait Donna she, she she's like i want to come she's like i want to come to your live office hours because i want to know what i'm i'm in for in august and i said okay so now you know so donna donna is going to be uh talking about um uh, singing games and activities that you can use with all ages so if you are teaching little ones or if you have small group classes or choirs or classrooms she's gonna she's gonna share all of her wisdom we'll do the same thing we'll have a registration form you can ask your questions i will share those with donna and she will blow your mind do you know every time i go over to donna's house like i get like you know some snacks and then she shares some music game and i'm like that's amazing so you're in for a treat so we don't know the date yet but we will post all of that uh, in our newsletter and on our socials and cindy you are very welcome you're i'm so glad i get to see a lot of you you keep coming back to our live office hours thank you thank you thank you um so later in august donna ronizer will be joining us for a live office hours about singing and music games that we can do with our students and i am wishing everybody 
a fabulous afternoon and as always as always inspired teaching and happy singing so thank you oh mim point to the sign yeah there <laughs> you go <laughs> awesome have a wonderful day everyone thank you so much